Hi and welcome. We have a nice challenging problem here for you. We're trying to find a point that's on this line right here and that's also equidistant or the same distance from both A and B. Now, I don't have to graph this, but that's what I like to do to get a sense of how this problem might work. So continuing with that idea, I'm going to rewrite this equation so I can plot it on this graph. How am I going to do that? Well, I like to use slope intercept form, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides and subtract 2x from both sides. I'll do these two things at once. This cancels out, right? And what do I get? Well, y is going to equal 3 minus 2x. And in this form right here, 3 will be my y-intercept, so I can start to graph this, th this thing right here, so I get 1, 2, 3. And then my slope is negative 2, so this thing's going to go down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1, and so forth. I'm concerned where this line will be at this x value, the same x value as b, and this x value, the same x value as a. So the two x values I'm going to plug in here just to test it a little bit and get even more of a sense is negative 3, the same x value as a, and 6, the same x value as b. So let's plug those in to see what, to see what happens. So um, again, we'll plug in negative 3 first, this x value. Then we get 3 minus 2 times negative 3. That just equals 3 plus 6, right? And that's 9. So at that point, the line will go above a at 9. What's going to happen here when, when x is equal to 6? Well, y is going to equal 3 minus 2 times 6, which is 3 minus 12, which is negative 9. So if I plot those two points, I think I'll really get a sense of what's happening here. Negative 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's this point right there. And up here we get 6, 7, 8, 9. So now, to kind of really finish this picture, I am going to draw the line connecting the points here. The line we're trying to think about, finding the point on. I'll write the equation right here. Oops, wrong tool. The equation I'll write in point slope form. Excuse me, slope intercept form. Let me just find the right color. Y is equal to 3 minus 2x. So it's tempting to look for the midpoint of A and B and say, okay, well, the midpoint of A and B will be equidistant from both A and B. But is the midpoint on the line here? Not necessarily so. So we, we want to come up with a, a more general approach because we don't know where the midpoint falls. And we don't know how it's related to the line. So really what we're looking at is distance right here. Because we do know that these two lines, wherever this point is, right? We don't know where this point is right here. Wherever it is, the two distances going from it to A and B have to be equal. We can use that to get a lot further in this problem. So let's get started on that. Again, we're assuming there is a point, we'll call it P, where the x and y value is on our line and it's the same distance from A and B. So we'll call this distance right here, distance AP, right, the distance from A to P. And we'll call this distance right here, the distance from B to P, right, the distance from this point B to that point, wherever it is. So, and we're looking at these two and we know again that the distance of AP has to equal the distance of BP, right? We're assuming that there is such a point, P, where those two distances are the same. So now let's apply our distance formula to really make sense of, of this whole process. I think we'll start with the distance of AP. And I, I'll try and write it right here. The distance of AP, right? Let's subtract our y values, so we get the square root, and then we subtract y minus what? 5 squared, and that's going to be added to x minus negative 3, or x plus 3 squared. And if we simplify this a little bit, which I do in a moment, I think we'll be surprised to see how it connects to the distance of bp. So what will that be? Well, that's going to be the square root of, again, y minus negative 4. So y plus 4 subtracting a negative, right, is, is adding squared, plus what? Well, now I have to take the difference of the x values. x minus 6 
squared. And these two things are equal, right? So that's going to help us move forward here. If the, if the two things are equal, let's expand both of them and then set them equal to each other and see what happens. So the distance of AP. If I expand this thing, I get, instead of y minus 5 squared, that would be y squared, right? Okay, write this here. y squared minus 10y plus 25 plus, now expand the, that was this part, let's expand x plus 3 squared, x squared plus 6x plus 9, right? And we could take the square root of all that, but I'll leave that out for a moment. That's going to equal the distance of BP. So let's exp expand y plus 4 squared. That's going to equal y squared plus 8y, right, plus 16. And we're adding that to x minus 6 squared. So that's x squared minus 12x plus 36. Now, initially here, these, these two equations seem like we can't even touch them because they have the square root on both sides. But instead of writing out the square root on both sides over here, I'm just going to say, let's square the whole equation, right? If you remember, if you take the square root of something, I'll write it up here maybe, of x, that squared is just x, right? This goes back to the fact that exponents and roots are inverses. So if we square both sides, instead of writing in the square root on both sides like this, and then saying, okay, square everything, because that'll get rid of the square roots, let's just leave the square roots out. It has the same effect. Right, so we can actually get rid of those square roots by balancing them out in the terms of squaring both sides. Squaring those square roots opens these equations up, and now we can move forward. And this is where I think things get pleasantly surprising. Because you feel like, well, I felt like this was overwhelming. But when you start simplifying this, you realize things work out quite nicely. Let's subtract y squared from both sides. And then we see that the y squareds cancel out. Let's do some more, subtracting x squared from both sides, right? And we keep going. What if I add 10y to both sides? What if I, sub well, let's say, add 12x to both sides? I like to add. It's a little bit easier to deal with. And if I think of 25 and 4 as being combined to make 34, I could subtract 34 from both sides. Right, subtract 34. So now, actually, I think this equation is much easier to deal with because what's going to start to happen now is things will cancel out very nicely. y squared minus y squared cancels out. 10y, negative 10y plus 10y cancels out. 25 minus 25 cancels out. 9 minus 9 cancels out. x squared minus x squared cancels out. Same thing happens over here, right? Those cancel out. Negative 12x plus 12x cancels out. And now we have a much simpler equation. Let's rewrite this. 12x plus 6x, what's well, 18x, right? It's going to equal, well, what's left over on this side over here? Well, we have 8y plus 10y, that's 18y. And then we have 16, and this is just 2, right? 36 minus 24 is 2. So that's 18x plus 18y plus 2. Oh, plus 18, sorry. I forgot there that we had, not only do we have this 2, we have the 16 as well. So 18y plus 18. Now, if I want to solve this in terms of y, what do I do? Well, let me just clear this off for a moment. Right, I want to solve this in terms of y to see a nice relationship because I'm, I'm already solving for the line in terms of y. Thinking of the same thing here in terms of y might help me move forward. So let me just clear some of this. And okay. So again, we have right now that 18x equals 18y plus 18. If I want to solve in terms of y, I'll subtract 18 from both sides. And then what I get is 18x minus 18 equals 18y. A lot of 18s here. Divide everything by 18, 
and I get x, right, minus 1 equals y. Let's just pause there for a moment. So what does this really mean? What did we just do? Well, again, let's see if I can pull up the original image. Okay. But again, what we said was that, okay, there's got to be some point on the line. We called it x, y. And wherever that point is, it has the same distance from a and b. So we equated the two distance, distances here to each other, distance of ap, distance of bp. And by equating them to each other, we can simplify and solve for x. Now, what does that answer mean? Because again, what we got was it said that y equals x minus 1. Well, these, this y and x value refers to the points of p, the, the point values of p, the x and the y here. It tells me that wherever this point is, y is the y value of the point is going to equal 1 less than the x value. That's a really useful piece of information because now we're ready to move forward and finish this problem off, even though it seems like we might be nowhere. So this defines how the point p is going to to function and operate, right? Whatever this point P is, the Y value is always one less than the X value. And we actually have enough information to go forward because we also have, we might have forgotten it, but, but it's still useful. We have the equation of the line that we started with. And when we started, we rewrote that equation. We rewrote it as Y, right, equals minus 2X plus 3. Well, since this is the equation of our line, and we know that this point is on the line. At some point, this, these two are going to be equal to each other. Right? This point right here is going to be on the line. So we set them equal to each other, and we've got a nice equation to solve. Because x minus 1 equals y, and this equals y. So I'm just going to substitute to move forward. Instead of writing y equals negative 2x plus 3, I'm going to write x minus 1 because we know x minus 1 is y. So now we have x minus 1 equals negative 2x plus 3. If I solve for x here, I would probably add 2x to both sides, right? And add 1 to both sides. This helps me out. These cancel out. x plus 2x, that is 3x, of course. These cancel out. 3 plus 1 is 4. And what does x equal? But 4 over 3. Now we're almost done. One more step. The x value of our point is this. But we know what the y value is. The y value has to equal the x value minus 1 of our point. So that means that y is going to be equal to 4 thirds, that's our x value, minus 1. 1 is like 3 thirds, right? So 4 thirds minus 3 thirds equals what? Well, you have 4 thirds, take 3 of them away, you get 1 third. So now, right, we have our y value of our point. So our point P has to be 4 over 3 and 1 third. So this point, if we go back to our graph, that's 4 over 3 and 1 third, right? If you can see, that's kind of exactly where we're, at, where we're at, right? 4 over 3, of course, is 1 and a third, and then we go up a third. And this is not the midpoint of AB, but the point is right here, and you can see that it's on the line. And you could test it out, right? Let me just write this down, that this P value is equal to 4 over 3 and 1, 3. If you plug this X value into our, our formula for the line, Y equals 3 minus 2X, you will get 1 third. So it is a solution. And also, you could test this. Calculate the distance from AP and compare it from a calculate the distance from a to p and compare it to the distance from b to p and they will be equal right they're identical distances so we did find the point and all we had to do was solve it algebraically this just goes back to that that awesome power of algebra to deal with a problem that we that basically seems impossible at first but really is something we can deal with all right hope that helped